Who are you running from? That's the question on everyone's mind as we dive into Game Boy Works Gaiden, Episode 3. This week I'm fielding a patron request and tackling an oddball Game Boy release that straddles the line between a game cartridge and a peripheral, the Game Boy Camera. It works like a peripheral, but it protrudes from a cartridge. It functions like hardware, but it also contains game software. So confusing. But however you want to classify it, the one thing we can all agree on when it comes to the Game Boy Camera is that it is one of the greatest video game gadgets of all time. On the face of it, the Game Boy Camera does not seem particularly amazing. It's a monochromatic digital camera boosting a hilariously meager 128 by 128 pixel resolution, the ability to save a mere 30 photos, a cumbersome user interface, and a tiny lens with a fixed focal length. The GB camera can't transfer photos to a computer without the use of makeshift aftermarket tools. It can't record video, and it can barely focus on images. And it's wonderful. Game Boy Camera's combination of extreme limitations and the sheer playfulness of the device make it one of the most unique game peripherals of all time, a perfect embodiment of Gunpei Yokoi's driving philosophy of lateral thinking with seasoned technology. Yokoi didn't have a direct hand in the Game Boy Camera to my knowledge. It shipped in 1998, one year after his death and two years after his departure from Nintendo. Yet Yokoi's spirit permeates the device, all the way down to the playable Game & Watch Ball remake. Even now, the Game Boy Camera remains a mainstay among enthusiasts. Its lo-fi visual style gives it a distinct retro flavor that makes it unique even in the age of Instagram. A GB camera snapshot was even used for the cover of Neil Young's Silver and Gold album more than 20 years ago, and its DJ mode continues to be harnessed as a simple loop tool for live performances by chiptune artists. It helps that even at the time of its debut, Game Boy Camera was far from an impressive piece of tech. It was novel, yes, but the gadget arrived in this world instantly obsolete. Consumer-level digital cameras had been around since the beginning of the 90s, with devices like Sony's Mavica and Apple's QuickTake already leading the way toward the pocket phone photography world we inhabit today. Both Mavica and QuickTake offered 16 or even 32-bit color rather than 2-bit monochrome, and they shot with as much as 640x40 resolution. Plus, they could easily transfer their files to a computer for sharing and processing. Meanwhile, the Game Boy Camera offered none of these features. It was a tiny little ball affixed to one end of an oversized Game Boy cartridge, and it lacked even a fraction of the performance required for serious photography. On the other hand, a Quick Take or Mavica costs somewhere in the neighborhood of $600 to $1,000. A Game Boy camera costs about $50. Once again, we see the philosophy of affordable play that defined Game Boy in action. Just as the system itself became a mega hit by offering a fraction of the capabilities found in competing portables and selling at half their price, the Game Boy Camera was priced to be a fun, affordable application of technology, in this case a 128 by 128 pixel CMOS sensor that would otherwise be priced out of reach for its target audience of kids and teens. Besides, the Game Boy Camera was far more than just a camera. For one thing, it gave most Westerners their first taste of the print club photo booths that were gaining popularity around Japan at the time, allowing them to modify and mutilate their photos. It also doubled as, well, a game, and a sound creating device, and a trade-driven social experience. Little wonder, the Game Boy Camera is credited to Jupiter, but also in part to Creatures Inc., a developer that had emerged from Earthbound creator Shigesate Itoi's studio Ape, and would soon become intimately involved in the Pokemon franchise. On top of that, the key internal development lead on Game Boy Camera for Nintendo was Hirokazu Chip Tanaka, the R&D1 composer who had almost single-handedly defined the sound of Nintendo's arcade and NES black box era before moving on to more sophisticated works like Metroid, Kid Icarus, and, yes, Earthbound. In fact, Tanaka would soon become involved in the Pokemon series as a composer for the anime, which ultimately would leave him to leave Nintendo and become president of Creatures, Inc. It's entirely possible the Creatures GB camera collaboration played a big part in Tanaka's lateral career move. In any case, Tanaka was a perfect choice to head up the Game Boy Camera. He had been responsible for developing the Game Boy's link cable tech, which itself was pivotal to Pokemon's success, and the Game Boy Camera makes extensive use of the link cable. Not only does the camera allow you to trade photos with friends, certain hidden elements can only be unlocked through trade, and players who wanted to preserve their photos for posterity could initially do so only by using the link cable to transmit image data to a thermal printer. And naturally, Game Boy Camera's musical capabilities were 100% Tanaka, who is a composer himself. There's a lot of soul in Game Boy Camera is what I'm saying, 
It's not the kind of rote product you associate with game publishers. It's a fun, whimsical, flexible, surprising passion project that extends the aging Game Boy's hardware capabilities in new and unexpected ways. Game Boy Camera transforms photography into a video game. The camera's primary interface resembles a role-playing game or visual novel, with a series of commands selectable from a menu at the bottom of the screen. Most of these options, aside from shoot, don't necessarily do quite what you'd expect. Run, for example, sometimes brings up a weird error screen that demands, what are you running from? This points towards the profound strangeness that defines the Game Boy Camera. The software is every bit as bizarre as it is functional. Quirky animations appear throughout the user experience, and the developers clearly made extensive use of the camera's image capturing and modification features and baked their own creations into the operating system. The interface's whimsical spirit encourages users to play and explore rather than simply treat the camera as a photo tool. You can alter photos in a variety of ways. You can doodle on them, yes, but you can also composite multiple photos into mashups or panoramas. The Game Boy Camera's limited onboard storage space only leaves room for 30 shots, so it encourages users to treat their creations as precious, to carefully curate their library rather than carelessly hoarding gigabytes of information the way we do on modern smartphones. The interface for dealing with images, sharing, deleting, and printing is a bit cumbersome, which in turn encourages users to stop and consider their actions. While users can record their photographic masterpieces to the first photo album, Album A, the Game Boy Camera also contains an Album B packed with built-in, unlockable images. This is where you'll find things like Pokemon stamps, as well as photos that no one in their right mind could possibly want to preserve or print. To unlock Album B's goods, you need to explore the Game Boy Camera's system inside and out. Playing games, sharing images, linking up with people whose profiles are set to different genders, it's a fairly involved setup that offers no direct guidance, leaving users to discover Game Boy Camera's secrets on their own. Again, Game Boy Camera is a gadget turned into a toy. It celebrates the art of play and of photography, and nowhere is that more obvious than in the built-in video games. While none of Game Boy Camera's four games are especially deep, they're fun extras and almost make the Game Boy Camera feel like a bonus entry in the Game & Watch Gallery series. Not least of all because the original Game & Watch handheld, Ball, is recreated here in a fittingly strange way. While Game Boy Camera Ball plays exactly like the Game & Watch handheld, with your little on-screen avatar juggling three or more balls at once, moving left and right to catch and release each ball while avoiding a miss, it harnesses the camera feature to turn you into Mr. Game & Watch. You can capture your portrait and set it as the face of your Ball avatar. You can also insert yourself into Run Run Run, a game that is essentially an endless runner before we had a name for the genre. In Run Run Run, you need to jump and hover over a series of hurdles in order to beat a mole and a bird you're competing against. Space Fever 2, however, is the most traditional game here, which is probably why it's the camera's default game. While its name presents it as the sequel to an early Nintendo arcade title, Space Fever, it feels more reminiscent of early Game Boy shooter Solar Striker. The mechanics of Space Fever 2 couldn't be more simple. Waves of enemies attack, two or three at a time, and you fire back with an alternating cycle of projectiles. You alternately fire one or more bullets back at the enemies, earning bonus points if you manage to take out multiple foes in a single shot. Once you survive the initial wave, you have to face off against a boss, which is invariably some sort of bizarre photo composite captured with the Game Boy camera. If you manage to survive, the cycle repeats a little harder than the last time. And finally, there's DJ. DJ isn't really a game, as it has no rules or objectives. It's more of a toy. DJ gives you a shockingly robust multi-track loop editor that lets you create, playback, and modify a 16-beat measure of audio by adjusting the gain duration, tone, and waveform style of three Game Boy audio channels. It's a dense but remarkably versatile tool, despite its limitations, and it helped inspire an entire suite of Game Boy-based music trackers that continue to be mainstays of the chiptune genre, up to and including the built-in music editor in the upcoming Analog Pocket. It's this sort of versatility and quirkiness that have made the Game Boy Camera such an enduring creation. Every few years, some artist or media personality discovers the thing and uses it in a new, fun way that thrusts Game Boy Camera back into the current gaming discourse, despite it being hilariously primitive and woefully dated. Game Boy Camera has also proven a favorite among hackers and modders who love to extend its capabilities with homebrew features. Alex Bear's BitBoy, for example, is a brilliant gadget that plugs into the Game Boy's link cable port and allows you to save Game Boy Camera photos to an SD card for use on computer. To save an image to BitBoy, you print that photo. The BitBoy simply captures the data Game Boy Camera would normally feed to a Game Boy printer and converts the data stream into a BMP file. 
It's not as convenient as simply grabbing all the images at once from a root directory, but it's a clever hack and the deliberate nature of the process feels somehow fitting. Bear also helped set me up with one of the other modern day Game Boy camera mods, a 3D printed camera lens adapter conceived by Bastien Ekeler. The adapter replaces the front face and default lens of the Game Boy camera and allows you to attach actual proper professional camera lenses to the peripheral, anything from a macro lens to a telephoto lens. If you've ever wanted to, say, take grainy monochrome spy photos of pedestrians at a train station a quarter of a mile away from the 24 story window of a hotel, Eckler's add-on is the way to go. None of these tools are particularly essential creations, but they demonstrate the sort of loyalty and passion the Game Boy camera continues to inspire among game enthusiasts and hobbyists alike. It's rare to see a video game accessory transcend its original purpose and survive more than two decades, especially when the peripheral in question was impossibly outdated the day it originally shipped. But the Game Boy camera is a one-of-a-kind creation, arguably the crowning achievement of the Game Boy, tied intimately to some of the platform's most significant creators and game franchises. And best of all, Nintendo made a ton of them. Aside from the ultra-rare gold-colored Zelda model, the Game Boy camera remains a cheap, plentiful, easily accessible gadget. And it's still every bit as fun to use today as it was when it first debuted 22 years ago.